Hello, Christ United Methodist Church, friends and family. It's Pastor Jeremiah coming to you with this week's Upper Room Devotional. And it's titled, A Servant of God, and comes to us from Mark Carter from Oregon, USA. So, hi, Mark. How you doing? I was glad to read your devotional today. And if it comes across your newsfeed, how you doing? <laughs> it's not the first time somebody we've done one of these Upper Room Devotionals has heard about what we're doing here as uh, we reflect on the devotionals and maybe interpret them in our own space and time. Mark's focus is about servanthood and servant leadership and what that really means for us. And, and beyond that, not just servanthood and servant leadership, but being hands and feet of Christ for the world. What does that mean for each and every one of us as we try and represent and represent Christ to those we encounter in our worlds as we interpret the gospel and move forward, sharing what we know about what God has done in and through each of us in our churches, in our communities, in our homes, in our own personal relationships with God. What in the world does that really mean? And yet also at the same time, I'll share you a story that I think might get at the heart of what I think Mark's intent may be. One, some of you may know, I, I work with many churches, and one of our partner churches is Memorial UCC Church. And we have launched in partnership with Cedar Creek and Memorial UCC and Christ United Methodist Church, and beyond that, partnerships with uh, m many of the churches here in the Oregon, East Toledo area who provide food and resources and volunteers and, and even community members, not even attached to a church, the number of people who help us do what we're doing down there. And, and though I have an administrative role in this, I am also serving those who volunteer, not only those who come to receive food at our pantry or our, our community kitchen meals. And what, last Saturday, to be exact, I came in after an Easter egg hunt that we did in partnership with our friends Hope across the street at the at the high school. But then I came into the pantry a little late and each week we do the pantry. There are different volunteers and then some familiar volunteers every time we do it. And there was a trash bag that had fallen into the trash can. And we're talking down in. And then our guests who were there um, were not able to realize or recognize that that had fallen down. And so all of the meal plates had just and drinks had just gotten dumped on top of the trash can. It was a mess. And our volunteers in the kitchen uh, were not able to throw things away easily. And so there was another bag floating and there needed to be some help. And I came in and everybody's doing their job. There's people cleaning and working in the kitchen and people signing people in for the food pantry and personal shoppers walking and then people carrying groceries out to their car. And our guests are sitting and eating, enjoying some fellowship with their community. All these things are going around and here was this trash can that needed cleaned and it was gross. I'm going to tell you right now, it was full of all kinds of different things dumped on top, coffee grounds and, and drinks and juices and it's sticky and there's dessert and there's macaroni and cheese all over the inside of the can and it had smelled a little bit bad. And so I said, well, what can I do? I can clean the trash can. And so I reached in there and took out the bag, tied it off, ran it outside so it wasn't in the building, realized that the can itself was just really gross on the inside. And not just from today's effort, that day's efforts, but instead it hadn't been cleaned in actually some time from several other events, many of which we hosted and it just didn't, weren't aware that there was a clean bag on top of a dirty can. And so I took it and started to spray it out and use the sink and hot soapy water and did my best to clean the can out more. I had to get a stick to reach in there and scrape stuff off the bottom. It was really disgusting. But it's the way I could serve those who were serving the Lord and it's the way I could be of service and also be hands and feet of Jesus too. When I was doing that, I had somebody who didn't know who I was talk to me a little bit and go, that's pretty gross, thank you for doing it. And then later on, they found out that I was the pastor of uh, one of the pastors that is leading this and they couldn't believe that the pastor was cleaning out the disgusting garbage can. To which I was able to say, well, if Jesus washed feet, who am I not to clean a garbage can? It said a lot to them and it wasn't an intentional move from me to say, look at me as I'm doing disgusting things. It was in the best way I could serve. I wasn't thinking about its impact on others and what it might mean, but it meant a lot to the guests who observed it, who knew who I was. It meant a lot 
to the person who didn't know me, who was surprised that the pastor of a church would do that. And that was good um, for them to reconsider what they think about those who are servant leaders and clergy about what they're called to do. And I've had this conversation before as uh, many people have caught me mopping and cleaning toilets here at our my church here at Christ or, or doing all kinds of things that people don't expect pastors, quote unquote, to do or expect people of any sort to do willingly or gladly or to jump right in and do it. And, and so the idea isn't look at me as much as look at what Christ in me does. Humility and lowliness are, are invitations for us, servant-minded hearts willing to do the things that others don't want to do. This is what Jesus did in his own ministry. Washing feet was the beginning of that, but sitting at table with tax collectors and, and forgiving and sitting and being with prostitutes and touching the sick and being around those who are labeled unclean by their society, going and visiting a Samaritan woman at a well, or visiting with a Roman legionnaire or a centurion and saying this person too is welcome. He exemplified through how he lived, welcoming everybody to experience God's love and to come near to him. And this is what I think we who are disciples are called to do as well. And that's what Mark is pushing at as well. He says, uh, look at Ephesians 2 verse 10. We are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we may walk in them. And good works can take all forms. One of the things that I hear frequently enough from people is, that they don't know how they can be the hands and feet of Christ, that they're not gifted or they're not, they're not able to sing or speak or give a sermon or they're not educated or whatever it may be that I've heard that people going kind of go ahead and reduce ministry to Christ down to a select few who can do it. And the reality of it is, is we are all called to use our whole selves to do good works that the people of the world can pick up and say, hey, look, what's that? I see Jesus. That's you. And it can be a phone call. It can be talking to somebody. It can be doing something disgusting, or it can be doing all kinds of things that are unexpected in the world around us or even expected. Um, so let's look at what Mark has to say as he focuses in on volunteers and, and recognizing that we are each hands and feet, that we are each called to represent and represent Christ in the ways we are capable he writes, I spent many years as a volunteer for a local food program. Each day we delivered hot meals to folks who were unable to leave home to get their own food. We got to know the people we delivered to quite well. And we always arranged our schedules so that we could spend a few minutes visiting with each person. One day, a woman to whom I was delivering food told me, you are truly a servant of God. I was stunned. I had considered myself a volunteer and nothing more. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I was doing what the Lord asked his followers to do, spending time serving others. There are many ways to serve God. We help make our world a better place when we live God's words and do God's work. Not only do we transform the lives of others, but we transform our own lives as well. People often strive to serve and imitate good leaders. And in the Lord, we have the best leader of all. We should always try to serve the Lord well. Amen to that, Mark, and thank you for your writing. And and I'll add that one of the things that we here at Christ frequently do, and, and I invite you to consider, is what happens when, in many places. And one of the places I see that exemplified most for me is at the communion table. We here uh, have an open table that allows all people to participate. And in the communion liturgy, we talk about the body and blood of Christ, bread and cup. We talk about those things through the idea or lens that they are transformative in mystery that we are made one with Christ and one with each other and made hands and feet of Christ, made body of Christ, redeemed by him, transformed to serve the world. Somehow in this idea of becoming and encountering the mystery of the divine, we are transformed and changed. It's not about us anymore. And I know sometimes people really struggle with, you know, showing the world what they do or telling the world what God is doing in and through them and sharing their stories or their ministries or their heart or their passions to show God's love. But if we don't share what God is doing in and through us with the world, then how will people see God? We got to show up in ways that are unexpected and not limit or label things as little things or just not important or insignificant. Instead, anything you do to reveal God's love to others makes you somebody who reveals Christ. 
not just a volunteer, but instead hands and feet of God in the world, moving and living and breathing still today. How cool is that? How important is that narrative in a world like ours that we find ourselves in? Where you turn on the social media, you get on Facebook, or you, you get on TikToks, or wherever you're at, and all the negativity and dis just difficulties we see as we respond in this modern world, and we think, hey, God, where are you at? And maybe the first place any of us ought to look when we wonder what God is doing or where God is at is in the mirror. How is God using you? How is God using me? And am I walking the disciples' walk? Or am I just going through motions thinking this whole Jesus thing is a pretty good thing to keep me out of suffering and hell for eternity? <laughs> That's such a limited and very myopic way of looking at what God is doing in the world through believers in Christ. I encourage you to challenge yourself and to push yourself beyond maybe where you're sitting today with your time, your gifts, your talents, and what you're doing with all of those things. Are they representing Christ? Or are they just busy things that keep you distracted, focused on the world? Who knows what that may be? That's an individual journey for each of us and a lifelong journey as well to discern how God is living and breathing and working in and through each of us. I leave that with you in Christ's name today. And then the thought for the day is when I serve Jesus, no act of kindness is too small. Don't limit it. A phone call, a card mailed, a, a, a wave and a smile, opening the door, acknowledging somebody who maybe most people don't see all kinds of ways we can show God's love and kindness in the world. There are no actions too small when it comes to showing the world God's love. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, thank you for equipping us and using us to build up others. Guide us to imitate you in all that we do. Help us to be those who remain fixed on you, doing the things you've called us to do, doing the dirty jobs, doing the non-important or prestigious jobs, doing the little things and even big things, all seeking your glory. Give us forgiveness and grace when we fall short and help us to continue to strive to be your hands and feet even if it calls us into discomfort or even uneasiness, even if it calls us into things we'd rather not do, help us to do them anyway with courage, knowing that you will live and work and breathe through us in the good works that are done. Not because doing good things saves us, but because doing good things shows others your love. In your gracious and holy name we pray. Amen. We will see you next week.